Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In this video, we will look into the construction details and working of different parts of a horizontal milling machine. We will discuss about the parts that construct a milling machine and understand their functions. To begin with, the lowest part of a horizontal milling machine is the base. The whole structure of horizontal milling machines stands on the base. The base is usually made out of gray cast iron through casting process. Gray cast iron is used due to its strength, rigidity, and wear resistance property. Primary function of this base is to hold and align the milling machine firmly in its position. The base supports every component of the machine and can absorb vibrations created during milling operations. Some machines have hollow bases that act as cutting fluid reservoirs. Now, a vertical column is mounted at one side on top of the base. The column is of the major supporting part and positioned vertically on the base. The column is usually a hollow structure, which means it is like a box-shaped structure. The column houses all the driving mechanisms for the spindle and table feed motion, including all gear, pulleys, motors. On top of the column is the overarm. Another name for this is overhanging arm. The overarm is also made out of gray cast iron. The overarm is installed on the top of the column. It is fixed to the column on one side, and on the other side of the overarm, there is arbor support and yoke. This arbor support and this yoke are both here to support this bar, which is called arbor. The arbor is a bar on which the spindle is fixed. Some milling machines only have the arbor support. Some milling machines have both arbor support and the yoke. Both are used to support the arbor. The arbor support is usually fixed with the overarm. It does not move. Whereas, the yoke can be adjusted by moving back and forth and provides support to the arbor at the position where strong support is needed during milling operation. Bearings are installed within both the arbor support and the yoke, which helps to support the rotation of the arbor during cutting or machining process. On this side, there is a spindle or spindle nose. The spindle nose or spindle is hollow. The arbor is fixed on this hollow spindle nose. We already know that all the driving mechanisms for the spindle are inside this column, and the rotational motion that is generated inside the column is transferred to the arbor through this spindle nose. Again, the milling cutter is mounted on the arbor. So when the arbor starts rotating, the rotational motion is transferred to the milling cutter also, and the cutter starts rotating and removes material from the work surface. Now, there is a basic difference between the spindle and the arbor. The spindle is the part that is connected to the driving shaft. Spindle is the part that rotates due to rotation of the driving mechanism inside the column. Whereas, the arbor is used to mount the milling cutter, and it is only an extension bar that is fixed with the spindle nose to transfer the rotational motion from the spindle to the cutter. The arbor is usually selected according to the internal diameter of the milling cutter that will be used. We can choose a thicker or thinner diameter arbor based on the internal diameter of the milling cutter that will be used for machining, so that the cutter is adjusted and properly fixed on the arbor and does not move during material removal process. So, arbor is an extension bar that is fixed with the spindle nose to transfer the rotational motion from the spindle to the cutter. A dovetail-shaped guideway is provided at the front of the vertical face of this column to support the knee. This guideways vertically guide and support the knee, the machine vise and table mounted on top of the knee, so that the workpiece can be placed firmly and accurately in position during machining operation. Fixed to the base, here we have a threaded screw. It can be also called a screw jack or an elevating screw. On top of this elevating screw, the knee is mounted. The elevating screw has threads that can provide upward and downward movement to the knee and table by rotating it using a hand wheel. It is called the knee due to its shape is quite similar to that of the human body knee, and as it supports the weight of the whole work table, saddle, machine vise, and the work piece mounted on it. The knee is attached to the column and has guideways by which it can move up and down with the help of the elevating screw for adjusting its height. The knee moves vertically along the guideways, and this movement enables to adjust the distance between the cutter and the job or work piece mounted on the table. When this vertical traverse handle is rotated with the help of hand or power feed, the knee moves vertically up or down along the elevating screw jack. After that, the saddle is mounted on top of the knee. Saddle connects the work table to the milling machine knee. The saddle is connected to the knee with guideways. The saddle is present on the top of the knee which further carries the table. 
Its basic function is to support the table. The saddle can slide on the guideways above knee, which are exactly at 90 degrees to the column face. Saddle moves in or out on guideways provided on the knee. This helps in the movement of the work table perpendicular to the column. Just like the knee can move vertically up and down, the saddle moves back and forth perpendicularly. That is, it allows and supports y-axis table movement from the column face like this. So, the saddle is situated on top of the knee and beneath the table. The saddle motion is controlled using this cross-traverse handle, which allow for the saddle and table to be moved in toward the column or out, away from the column. Now, the table is mounted on top of the saddle. The table securely holds the machine vise that holds the workpiece. The table is mounted on top of the saddle and can be moved along the x-axis. On top of the table are some T-slots for the mounting of workpiece or clamping fixtures. The table is fixed on the saddle's guideways. The table is very flat and is the part to which the work is securely fastened. T-bolts attached to machine vise or the workpiece holding attachment can be fitted into these T-slots to firmly hold the workpiece in required position. This table can travel longitudinally in a horizontal plane. Here we have a feed handle. Using the feed handle, the table along with the workpiece mounted on it can be moved side to side in the horizontal plane in the direction of either end of the table. The table can be operated by hand or by power to provide manual or automatic feed. Mounted on top of the table, there is a machine vise. The machine vise is a clamping device used to securely hold the object or the workpiece when we operate the milling machine. The machine vise is mounted using T-bolts fixed below the vise, so it can be fixed on T-slots above the saddle. And finally, here is the work or workpiece or the job on which we will conduct the machining and material removal process. We have to remove excess material from this work surface using this milling cutter. So, first we get vertical, up and down, movement provided by raising or lowering the knee. When this vertical traverse handle is rotated with the help of hand or power feed, the knee moves vertically up or down along the elevating screw jack. This vertical, up and down, movement helps to adjust the height of the workpiece. After that, the saddle is situated on top of the knee and beneath the table. The saddle motion is controlled using this cross traverse handle, which allow for the saddle and table to be moved in toward the column or out, away from the column. Cross motion in or out, or transverse motion is provided by moving the saddle in relation to knee. So, it allows and supports y-axis table movement from the column face like this. This cross motion, in or out, or transverse motion helps to adjust the workpiece at proper distance with respect to the column as required for the material removal process. After that, this table can travel longitudinally in a horizontal plane. Here we have a feed handle. Using the feed handle, the table along with the workpiece mounted on it can be moved side to side in the horizontal plane in the direction of either end of the table. Since this is a 2D illustration, we were not able to show the table motion sideways. This sideway horizontal motion provided by this hand wheel and helps to adjust the workpiece at the required position along the x-axis for the material removal process. Here we have a machine vise mounted on the table. We can loosen or tighten this machine vise using this handle to hold the job or workpiece firmly. The machine vise has two jaws. One is a movable jaw, other is a fixed jaw. By rotating this handle, this movable jaw of the machine vise can be adjusted left or right, and the other jaw remains fixed. So, we can fit workpiece of any dimension using the machine vise. And finally, let's talk about the cutter. In a milling machine, the cutter rotates and the workpiece remains fixed. The arbor is fixed on this hollow spindle nose. We already know that all the driving mechanisms for the spindle are inside this column, and the rotational motion that is generated inside the column is transferred to the arbor through this spindle nose. Again, the milling cutter is mounted on the arbor. So when the arbor starts rotating, the rotational motion is transferred to the milling cutter also, and the cutter starts rotating and removes material from the work surface. The rotation speed of the cutter can be adjusted by adjusting the speed of spindle according to requirement for any machining operation. Here we have the arbor support and yoke. This arbor support and this yoke are both here to support this bar which is called arbor. Some milling machines only have the arbor support. Some milling machines have both arbor support and the yoke. Both are used to support the arbor. 
The arbor support is usually fixed with the overarm, it does not move. Whereas, the yoke can be adjusted by moving back and forth and provides support to the arbor at the position where strong support is needed during milling operation. The yoke can be positioned on either side of the cutter to provide strong support during heavy machining operations. As we discussed earlier, bearings are installed within both the arbor support and the yoke, which helps to support the rotation of the arbor during cutting or machining process. Thus, using all these parts and components, we can finally remove material from work surface using a horizontal milling machine. This is called a horizontal milling machine because both the arbor and the spindle of this milling machine are positioned horizontally. So, we have discussed the construction details and working of different parts of a horizontal milling machine. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.